Although I really enjoy doing single book reviews, I do also really like to pack a group of books together and review them en masse, which is what I'm doing right now. Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk about some of the books that I have read recently, some not so recently, one of them has been sitting around four months, um, but I'm just going to crack on and talk about them all right now. So in no particular order, I'm starting with this one. This is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which you have probably seen everywhere. This is um, by Suzanne Collins, the woman who brought us The Hunger Games. This is sort of what I would consider a complement to the trilogy. If you're into The Hunger Games, you probably already know what this book's about, or you've probably already read it yourself. This follows the story of um, President Snow in his early days. And I've seen mixed reviews. I've seen mixed reviews on this. I have to say, I really did enjoy it. It took me a while to get into it. It was quite sort of heavy, and I just read some other very heavy books. And going into this one with it being so big, I think it took me a little while to sort of slip back into the world of The Hunger Games. But once I was there, I really enjoyed this. I really loved the look at Snow character and finding out just what makes him tick and what makes him the person that he eventually became the fearless ruthless dictator that runs the capital in the in the Hunger Games. This starts with his very humble beginnings after coming out of the war with the district. The capital is struggling trying to regain its former glory that it had before the war and Snow's family have fallen upon hard times. They are struggling to be able to keep up appearances, they don't have the money that they once had, they don't have access to as much food as they once did, they don't have access to new clothes and Snow is really struggling to try and keep up with his peers as he's stepping into sort of new adulthood. And I... And I really like the development of this book. I like how we see Snow's character evolve from being this, just this boy who is really caring about his family and missing his mum, to being a person who will throw everything away for ambition. Snow considers himself to be relatively unaffected by the war and um, he has, he misses his mum that he talks about. But I think he doesn't realise just quite how affected he is and he is unable to create meaningful attachments with people. He doesn't have any loyalties to anybody and I really like the way that this plays out within the novel. This book did what I didn't think it would be able to do in that it humanised Snow and made him more of a person than just an entity as he is in the um, the original trilogy of The Hunger Games. If you're a fan of the original Hunger Games series, I would definitely recommend this one. As I say, it's had mixed reviews. Some people haven't enjoyed it. I really did. Um, but I would love to know what you think of it. So if you've read it, let me know down below. The next book that I've got is this one. This is A Pinch of Magic and this is by Michelle Harrison. I recently read this with my daughter as sort of a bedtime read and it was described as a mid-grade book which is I believe between the ages of 8 and 12. Um, so my daughter's 7, I thought it would be a perfect read. I will say that overall I enjoyed the story which I'll get to in a second but one thing that really annoyed me, it just straight out um, tells you that the Tooth Fairy isn't real. My daughter still believes in the Tooth Fairy and fairies in general and I really didn't like that so I had to skim over that bit and I'm glad that I was reading it to her and she wasn't reading it alone because having a book that's aimed at sort of an age group that starts around eight I really think that talking about how the tooth fairy isn't real um, shouldn't be in there it really shouldn't I don't know why a book would try and spoil magic for children so for that reason it really did annoy me but the actual story itself was pretty decent it's about a group of sisters who are trapped by an ancient curse and the three girls come into possession of three magical objects that has the ability to change their fate and perhaps break the curse and suffice to say it turned out to be a pretty decent read after I skimmed over the tooth fairy part and my daughter didn't know that that was in the book she ended up saying that she thought this was a five star read However, I gave it less stars myself due to the sort of truth bomb that I just didn't see coming. Um, I would have expected that more in a young adult novel, not a book that is marketed as mid-grade. Moving swiftly on to this one, this is L.J. Ross's Holy Island. This is a sort of crime thriller slash mystery set on Holy Island, which is an island off the Northumberland coast, which is close to where I live, hence why I bought this one. So this book I gave a 3 out of 5 star, and um, this is L.J. Ross's first novel. And the book focuses on um, a murder. A body turns up on Holy Island, which is a religious island. And it's a very small community, very crime-free. And um, I go to Holy Island quite a lot. It is just sort of a nice, peaceful place. However, a body turns up. And it has all of the hallmarks of sort of a, a pagan, ritualistic murder. And so our detective, who happens to be residing on the island at the time, gets knee-deep in what is going on. And pretty soon, a second body appears. 
I will say that I think this had a pretty decent storyline. I do like an element of paganism mixed in with a crime thriller or, or something like that. I do like that sort of added element. It, it just does something for me. So on sort of an outside glance, this should have been everything for me. However, however, we have a really irritating sort of other little sort of tangent. Our lead detective meets a woman who has been brought back to the island who is an expert on all things pagan. So she's been brought over to sort of lend her expertise to the pagan ritualistic slaughter that is occurring on the island. However, when she meets our lead detective, he is very surly, he's not very impressed by her at all, he's very sort of chauvinistic and a bit of an arse. But of course, she falls in insta-love with him and the pair of them end up on this sort of bizarre, hardly knowing each other but giving everything for one another and having this really cringy romance and it ruined the book for me. Like I say, the actual storyline of the murder and who did it, that is a really good story. And when we were talking about those parts in the book, I was interested. But the insta-love made me actually want to vomit um, and it was just appalling. It was really, really cringily written and it just made no sense. I mean, at one point, this is a spoiler alert, but at one point, her sister is one of the victims and yet minutes after, minutes after walking upon the crime scene where her sister's blood is like, uh, splattered all over, she um, she embarks upon a passionate kiss with the detective and um, just just what the hell? Your sister's dead and you, you full on necking on with the, with the fella around the corner. I mean, really? Really? So, I mean, the storyline could have been good, could have been a lot better, but what was with the insta-love? I don't understand this sort of idea that women want a man who is just a complete brute. I just... Next we have this one. This is My Perfect Sister by Penny Batchelor. This one was a really quick read and it follows the story of Annie. Annie has returned back to her old family home to sort of confront the ghosts of her past. In the past, her older sister Gemma disappeared one day whilst going out to school and never coming back. But when Gemma disappeared, Gemma became the perfect daughter and Annie sort of grew up in her sister's shadow. And once she left home, she distanced herself from her family. She never quite felt loved and cherished as much as she should have by her parents and she just got sick of living in her sister's, a missing sister's shadow. I did review this book on my, on my blog. As I say, it was a really quick read. I think it's 250 something pages long. Yeah, 250... Oh, 260. It's 260 pages long, so it didn't take long to get through. And it kind of has family secrets, hidden agendas, and um, just a family that's been at breaking point. The next book that I've got is a non-fiction. This is She Said. And this is the true story of the two journalists who brought us the Me Too movement and who really broke the headlines into the whole Harvey Weinstein case. And I will say that this was really interesting, but it is a hefty thing to dig into. There's a lot of correspondence to and fro in whilst our journalists are trying to get people to talk on record. And overall, I did get a little bit lost midway. For me, there was quite a lot of information, but I just didn't get on with the writing style as much. And so I ended up skim reading some of this, which is a shame because it does have a lot of information and it is a subject that I'm really interested in. But as I say, this book sort of fell a little bit short for me. At first it was hooked, but it did get a little bit monotonous and so for that reason I wouldn't heavily recommend it to you a lot of the information is already online anyway but it was interesting to read the story from the actual perspective of the people who did bring us the whole movement and did break the case there's a lot of emails and um, sort of interesting hidden correspondence which I did find very interesting but overall I'm not sure it would be something that I would actually go out and out recommend that you go and buy immediately but if you do come across it, maybe borrow it from a library or something like that, it might be something to sort of dip into if it's an area that you're interested in. And the final book that I read is this one. This is by Terry Hayes and this is I Am Pilgrim. This is a big old thing. I think it was around 900 pages, somewhere in that region. 892 pages, so it's a very long book. It did take me a while to get through, but I really enjoyed it. This is a crime thriller that has loads of elements. I'll just, I'll just read the back to you. It says, a young woman murdered in a rundown Manhattan hotel, a father publicly beheaded in the blistering sun of Saudi Arabia, a man's eyes stolen from his living body as he leaves a secret Syrian research laboratory, smouldering human remains on the mountainside of the Hindu Kush, a plot to commit an appalling crime against humanity, one thread that binds them all, one man to take the journey, Pilgrim. If you're looking for a long read to get into, this is brilliant. It just has so much going on. It follows a detective who has had his identity sort of 
a raise because he is so high up in the Secret Service that no one really knows who he is and he's operated under many different levels before. He's operated under many personas before and he considers himself to be largely in retirement right now. However, there is a case that brings him back out of retirement and that is the case of one of the most intelligent terrorists who is seemingly unstoppable and as everything is mounting up it becomes apparent that if Pilgrim does not solve the case that the world is going to be in serious, serious jeopardy. I really enjoyed this. I think this would make an excellent action movie. So if you're looking for a long, really immersive read, I'd really recommend this one. It was brilliant. So as usual, I will link all the books down below and um, let me know if you've read any of them. Let me know if you go into. Let me know if you enjoy insta romance in books that don't really shouldn't really be a romance book because it's a book about pagan murder and I don't know why there was romance in the book. Let me know, let me know and um, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.